Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew. Today we are painting on leather and faux leather. This is a technique that I've done before on a couple of jackets and I think it looks really great. We're doing two different things today. Well, actually three, but two separate kind of ideas. First, I have a couple of jackets that I thrifted that I think would look really great with some really bold graphic paint on them. So we're gonna be doing that for a wearable art kind of moment. And then I have a pair of faux leather pants that I've had forever that are starting to kind of peel and crack as faux leather often does over time. And rather than just throwing them away, I'm gonna to try to rescue them by sealing in the places where it's cracking with the paint and giving them um, a cool paint and treatment in the process. So hopefully that works. I haven't tried that before. This is gonna be kind of the experimental part of this video, but um, let's see what happens. So there are a couple of preparation steps before we get to painting. First, I compile my paints and brushes. The brushes that I'm using are cheap and pretty large, although I ended up using some smaller brushes for detail as well. A one inch angled brush is what I ended up using for most of this project. For paint, I'm working with a higher quality acrylic paint. In this case, it's a mix of Liquitex Basics and Liquitex Heavy Body. I've also painted leather with latex house paint in the past and that had pretty good results. That's a great option for covering large areas. I probably wouldn't recommend working with cheap craft acrylics on leather. These often dry flat, matte, and can crack, whereas more heavy-duty acrylics are kind of glossy and flexible and offer the option for more texture. I lay out my design in the Keynote app since I'm working with more of a graphic design than a freeform design this time. You may remember that I used this technique for my bathroom wall project as well. Here I photographed my two jackets and then overlaid them with some images that I scaled and manipulated to get the look that I wanted. This would certainly be more effective in Photoshop, but since I don't have that at the moment, Keynote is my go-to. The black and white design was originally created for a different jacket, but when I sat down to paint, I realized that the zipper on that jacket was broken, so I pulled a different jacket from my stock box. I think the design worked better on the original jacket and I didn't take too much time to rework it for this jacket, so there are definitely some scale and proportion issues that I need to solve later. And once the designs feel right, it's time to paint. I start with the black and white since this was a one color deal. I'll admit it was a bit rough to start. Ordinarily, I would work with a grid when painting a design like this, but that would be tricky on a jacket. So I rely heavily on the landmarks of the jacket, the seams, the zippers and edges and such to help me place things. Even still, I messed up sometimes with the proportions. Luckily, I could wipe away some of the paint with a wet paper towel if the paint was still wet. Once I lay down a base layer, I switch the jackets to let this one dry. On both the front and back of both jackets, I found it necessary to locate the center point from top to bottom since there were no landmarks in that area. I marked this on my keynote mock-up and you can see me marking it here on the jacket. This was really helpful in getting the placement right. The second jacket was my baby, it could do no wrong. Even after the first layer of light pink that I mixed with white and red, I was ready to wear this one. I think having the image be so sharp and solidly defined was key, whereas the black and white image still had some in-between gray tones that made the shapes more ambiguous and tough to replicate.
I set this aside to dry and jumped in on the pants. I went in with solid black paint to try to seal and disguise the peeling areas with the intention to add a multicolored design later. However, I didn't make it that far. Every time I brushed paint on, more of the shell peeled off. And even after the paint dried, the peeling continued. I think if I had rescued these right when they first started to show wear, the paint sealing technique would have been effective in saving them. However, these appear to be too far gone. Now the front of the black and white jacket is dry enough to allow me to paint the back. I think this layout was more successful and I was more practiced at this point, so it went more smoothly than the front for sure. Now the back of the other jacket. Once the pink was done, I went in with an aqua color that I mixed from white, blue, and a little bit of green. and then with red straight from the tube. Always checking with my design mock-up for the placement. Update time. So the pants were kind of a bust. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to let them go. I kept trying to paint it and everything was just continually um, peeling off. So I don't think there's anything I can do about that. And I think Oh, it makes me sad, but that is what it is. Um, of the two jackets, this one is totally rocking my world. I would wear that exactly as it is right now, um, but I still have some more work to do on that. But something about the scale and the design really works better. This one here is struggling right now. Um, it just feels a little forced um, and not as bold and graphic and also, um, I think I really made some big mistakes in terms of where I placed things on the front. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on, but I think there's some tangent lines where, like, see how the chin almost approaches the bottom and the hair almost approaches the edge. It's just like sort of sitting inside of there versus on this one, it's like always sort of exploding off the edge. So everything just feels a little like weirdly contained here. It's actually better on the back. So I'm gonna actually add something to this sleeve and modify the design a little bit to try to get some more graphic scale over here. Um, I'm gonna try to pop the white a little bit more in some areas, and then I'll try to go back in with the black and really define things. One, to clean up the design, and two, um, just to give a little bit more definition. Once upon a time, I took a sequential arts workshop, which is kind of like comic book art, which I'm honestly not that into, but I learned some things about tangent lines in a design sense that have stuck with me for many, many years. Basically, it's like a tangent in geometry. When the character or subject is right along or barely touching the edge of the frame but not passing it, it makes the composition feel static and kind of unexciting. When the subject is further away from the frame or passing the frame, the composition feels way more upbeat and alive. So I added this huge face on the empty sleeve, which is my favorite part of the design and really brought it to life. Then I go in all over and intensify the white to give the design more contrast. This was a huge improvement as well and I really started to like this look.
Back to the other jacket to add yellow, which I mixed from white and two different shades of yellow. I wanted the yellow to be light and citrusy, brighter than pastel, but not too golden or too green. So I am back and ready to finish these up today. This guy right here is looking great. I still need to put the red on the front. Um, I'm gonna mix up some more of the blue and the pink and just kind of intensify that and do some bridging here. I've done a little bit. You can see where I connected the yellow, but I'm gonna try to bridge this a little bit so it's not quite so stark where that hard line is, you know? Um, this guy, I've done a little bit off camera here to kind of experiment with what needed to happen and I think it was definitely some good changes. I actually ended up painting out the collar and the zippers um, and the ones on the sides as well in black again just to kind of like reintroduce the structure of the original garment. It was just feeling kind of like overwhelming like the painting was taking over the jacket and I wanted the jacket to kind of shine through a little bit more. So on that note, I'm also going to go in today and paint the cuff as well as right here along the bottom to kind of reintroduce that definition again. I'll make those black. Um, also, I painted out this face here. Something about where that zipper was sitting was kind of disturbing because it was like right on the eye and it was just not good. And also that face was like a mess anyway. So painting it out, I think was a better idea. I just continued that eyebrow from the face on the side. Um, again, on this one, I'm gonna go in and just sort of intensify the color on the back. I haven't touched that again yet. Um, and just make sure all the stuff on the side, all that, the places um, that connect the front and the back look really smooth and connected. And then I'll probably go in and build up a little bit of paint on here as well, just to give a little bit more texture so it really feels painted. So I have a clear plan. Let's do it. From here on out, I paint the jackets on the forms. While painting flat was definitely the best option to block in the colors, the garment is ultimately three-dimensional, so it needs to get the finishing touches in that state. I also consult the design on my laptop very little at this point, since I want the design to kind of take on a life of its own and not be a slave to the planning, you know? Here, I'm mostly building up the paint for contrast or paying special attention to how the front and back designs connect. Mixing up the second batches of the blue, pink, and yellow was not an exact science, so I ended up with a bit of color variation. I kind of think this added to the design, moving it a bit away from the Warhol reference image and making it a little bit more painterly. I ended up adding a few touches off camera after trying the jackets on. Again, seeing the garment in 3D and in motion can change a lot, especially in the areas connecting the front and the back. All right, y'all, the reveal is upon us. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to let me and YouTube know that you liked it. Do you guys want more painting videos, more upcycled fashion? Let me know what you want to see. And as always, thanks so much for taking the time to watch. I'll see y'all soon.